So this is the geometric distribution. So just like all our other distributions, X is our random variable, which is geometrically distributed. And the only parameter is P and P stands for the probability of success. Probability of success. Okay. Now it differs from the binomial distribution in that um, there's not a fixed number of trials. We stop when success occurs. Yeah. So it may be actually that um, we want success to occur on the second trial, the third trial, the fifth trial. OK, so, for example, here's an example question we might get um, a fair die. Is uh, rolled. OK, what we want to know is what is the probability probability of obtaining a four on the fifth roll. OK, now this is actually the type of thing you could have got at GCSE. So what does that mean? Um, what a probability of getting a four is one over six if this is a, a fair die. And the probability of not getting a, a four is going to be um, five over six. So what do we want to happen? Well, we want to fail. We don't want to get a four in the first roll, the second roll, the third roll, the fourth roll, or even the fifth roll. But we do want to get a six on the, or we do want to get a four on the sixth roll. So that can be just written as five over six to the power um, too many five is up five over six is one two three four right let's take one of these out I've got too many like that yeah so we want to fail four times but we want to succeed once and that will give us the answer so i'm guessing we could work that out on a calculator so that would be um, 5 over 6, and we want to do that to the power of 4, and then we want to times that by 1 over 6, and uh, get a big fraction. So to three significant figures, um, actually because it's a distribution question, four decimal places, 0.8. Oh, three, uh, zero. It's not my numbers here. Zero point zero. That's one decimal place. Eight oh three seven. So eight oh four. So that's the probability. Yeah. So what we were doing, we were basically saying, right, we want our success to occur on the fifth term so what was the probability of that happening what was the probability of getting a success on the five and that was um, equal to uh, that calculation we did which was the probability of success times by um, failures now because it happened five times we wanted failure to happen four times so if we generalize this with x so that would be x this would be x and then instead of four we would have x minus one x minus one okay so this is what we can use and you can it's all common sense really um, to work out the probability of success happening on a particular trial the first term the second term the third term but what if the question was different what if I wanted 
success. What if I wanted a four on anything up to the fifth trial? So what if I wanted, uh, I want a four on either the first or the second or the third or, or fourth or fifth keep in of or, or fifth yeah what would that probability be well that either means success on the first or it means failure on the first success on the second or it means um, failure on the first two, success on the third, and so on. Yeah, this is going to be quite complicated to do. So there's actually a quicker way of doing it. We've got like a, a general formula and it basically says this. If you want to find a probability of success occurring up to the X trial, then the easy way of doing it is doing one minus a failure x times. Now, one way of thinking of this is like a tree diagram. When you've got those questions and you work, you want to work out basically the answer from one branch, uh, from lots of branches to work out the answer from uh, for a particular question. So, you know, you might have a question like this. Let's say that's a tree diagram. And let's say the question that you're doing requires you to work out uh, this probability, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, leaving only this one blank at the end. Well, actually, it's easier to do one minus all of those things that you've just done and that's basically what we're doing here with that second formula now the first one is given in the formula book but not the second so you'll need to find a way of remembering that so you can use it in questions Johan is playing a board game where he has to roll a six to start so underline that find the probability that Johan um, starts the game on his fourth roll. Okay, yeah. Right, so what have we got here? We've got uh, a random variable x, which is a geometric distribution where the probability of success rolling a six is one over six. And we want to find the probability um, of that success occurring on the fourth roll. So using the formula or even common sense, what we get is we want one success and we want three failures. Yeah. Now, you may think of it actually like this and saying, right, if it's going to happen on the fourth roll, I want to fail on the first three and then succeed on the last one okay i'm just writing out the same way as the formula but either way will give you the same answer so uh, i know that five cubed is 125 so i get 125 over so we're going to get six times six cubed it's basically six to the power four which is one two nine six one, two, nine, six. So we can leave it like that, but that as a decimal is going to give me 0 0.0964. So four decimal places, 0 0.096. Now after the four is a five, so 965. Okay, there we go. That's all we need to do. 
right, the probability that Genevieve, I think, passes a driving test on any one attempt is 0.6. Okay, part A. Find the probability she passes on a fifth attempt, exactly a fifth attempt. So uh, this question, X is geometric distribution, probability of success, um, her passing is 0.6. And we want to find the probability that she passes on a fifth, which means that she needs to um, fail on the first four and then pass on the six like that uh, not the six the fifth attempt so fail on four pass on on the fifth so 0 0.4 to the power of four times by 0 0.6 and I get 48 over Three, one, two, five. So as a decimal, that is naught point. I want four decimal places. Naught point naught. Oh, actually, one, five, three, six. So that's the final answer. So I'll just write that down like that. I won't round it because it sort of terminates fairly quickly. Part B. So that she passes on five or fewer attempts. So this is the cumulative one like this so this is where we need to use the formula so this is going to be um, 1 minus 1 minus p probability of success which is 0 0.6 to the power uh, 5 so remember when we've got this Okay, the probability of that is uh, 1 minus, and in brackets, 1 minus p to the power x. So we're just substituting in there. So that'll be 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.6 to the power 5. That's 3093. over 3125 and if we press our SD button we get uh, 0, point, 0 0.98976 again it terminates fairly quickly so I'm just going to write all the decimal places down third part um, she needs more than five attempts now more than five is going to be like this now we use the techniques that we've used for plus on the binomial and we think right okay what does that mean more than five because this is discrete is going to be um, one minus the probability that it's less than or equal to five now we've just worked out what less than or equal to five so it's going to be one minus our previous answer 0.98976 so I'm just going to do one minus answer and I get 32 over 3125 and that is 0.0124 again I'll just write everything down like that okay so remember this stuff that we did from a uh, binomial where you want to do the greater than or greater than or equal to you do one minus the less than or equal to because we've we've only got a formula for the cumulative from zero and then part b state two assumptions you've used in our calculation uh well that actually the probability of passing remains constant probability of passing a driving test um, uh, remains 
at 0.6 okay um, also that they're independent the probability of passing is independent okay because probably in reality if you fail your driving test the first time you're probably more likely to pass the second time i don't think it actually is independent because you failing is going to have an effect on you passing the next time yeah because you might think right you're going to be more prepared you learn from your mistakes um yeah so any type of assumption like that that will be fine right you should now be able to do exercise 3a on pages 45 to 47 of the uh, textbook i'm just going to write the uh, formula here so you've got them so probability of getting success on a particular trial and that's going to be you want one pass or success and failure x minus one times the probability and success occurring up to the x trial is one minus the failure probability um, happening x times 